Hello, my dears. So, um, actually, Anna the Dream from YouTube sent me a picture and asked me to draw her like months ago. And I had a second the other day and I was like, what the hell, you know? She was like the first person who ever asked me, so whatever. So I just pulled up a picture and started drawing. So this is me um, sketching everything out. I'm using, of course, the uh, Adonis palette knife brush that I always use for like everything. Um, I'll have a link to it in the side uh, from Deviant Art. I'm also using the um, lasso tool to resize things to just get everything the right, right shape and size. I never get it right, like straight out of the box. And so instead of redrawing everything, I just use the lasso tool. I had those lines on a, on a separate layer from the background, so I dimmed the opacity to like 20% so I could see underneath it. Now on a different layer, coloring the skin, and then on yet another layer, I'm coloring the hair. So right now, I've got a total of four layers. we got the background, the skin, the hair, and the lines in that order. So I'm toggling the uh, lines on and off so I can see, you know, how everything looks without it because in the end they're going to be completely gone. I'm using the palette knife brush only larger to throw down um, slightly darker colors and then I'm going to use, once again, the smudge tool to blend it out. This is really fast. This originally took me um, like 2 hours and 15 minutes and I sped it up to 8 minutes. I know how everyone hates when I speed everything up but I'm sure you would also hate, you know, to have watched this in eight videos or whatever so I just wanted to get it knocked out and this is the same stuff that I use every single time so it's more like more like a speed painting than an instructional sort of thing but um, I have two shadow colors that I'm using one is kind of just a slightly darker version of the skin and then one has a little purpley blue tinge to it I normally add a lot of that stuff after the fact and you'll actually see me doing it um, with some really pinky colors to kind of match her skin but uh, this time I, hey, I went for it. I was like, what the hell, you know? My, my ability to just randomly color pick and, you know, find good colors or whatever is um, not so much, but I try to fake it every now and again, like I know what I'm doing. So yeah, um, noses are hard. I hate noses, but this one was, it was a really good shape. It wasn't, um, it was nice and round on the end and nothing crazy, so, so that was nice. Um, with the nose, you always have that like spot of light right below, um, between the eyebrows, kind of a little ways down. And it really, like, it seems like it wouldn't make that huge of a difference, but it really does like show you the shape of the nose kind of protruding out from the face. Um, so right now I'm just adding like some shapes to the face and whatnot and getting all that stuff down. This isn't really so much like a learning thing. I'm actually um, doing, I start out with the lips on a separate layer on top of it and once I know that I've gotten the shape right then I just flatten it down. It's easier to do this way so that you can bring in like a lot of the skin colors when you're blending the lips into the skin. But while you're sorting out the shape, um, if you're not 100% confident about it or I, sometimes it's just easier because then you can just resize them without messing up the colors that are on the layer, you know, on your skin layer. If you do happen to start coloring something on that layer and you want to resize it, it's best to use the lasso tool, select it, copy it, and paste it on top of it. That way, instead, as opposed to cutting it out of the layer, that way you don't have a hole to fill, you have the two layers to blend. I know it sounds confusing. One of these days I might, you know, do an explanation video of it, but whatever. So right now I'm doing the lips and adding um, a lot of purpley tones to the shadows to kind of give them a lot of depth. It really does give so much depth to your shadows when you've got like a mixture of cools and, um, and warm tones. So I kept, I don't normally keep my reference up in the right hand corner so small. I normally have, you know, a picture just off to the side, but I figured for the benefit of you guys, um, it might be nice to actually know what the hell I'm drawing once in a while. So I'm doing the eyeballs on a separate layer. So I've got the skin and then the eyeball layer. And then I actually did the irises on another layer because I didn't really, the, the sketch wasn't exactly on point. They were still a little wonky. I figured I'd refine them in this stage, but I didn't want to screw it up royally. So for now, they're all on different layers. Woo, creepy eyes. Um, it looks really weird when I take the iris away. But anywho, so I'm, uh, I'm just outlining them now, just getting some the shadow of the lashes. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend it down, or, or blend it, merge it down onto the skin layer as soon as I know that the shape is good. So that um, then I can start bringing, like I do, like I do with the lips, bringing those skin colors into the eye, like into the um, 
they call it the waterline. It's where like if you're a girl, you put eyeliner on and it gets all smudgy, but it's the waterline. It's, you know, putting um, the, the skin color as part of the color for the waterline really brings the eyeballs into the face and it gives your eyes some depth to have that, that juice, I just did that right there, the visible um, line. Because especially when you're looking at someone from this angle, you can definitely see it. And if you don't have it, I'm, hey, it's okay, it's not gonna kill your picture, but it gives you that extra amount of depth and that extra level of believability to be able to see that line and see where the eyelashes are coming out from. So, a little whatnot. I have the eyebrows on the hair layer so that, because I'm like just going crazy with the smudge tool, whenever you see the little dotted tool, that's me smudging like nuts and I don't want to mix everything up. I use the color dodge tool to um, brighten up the eyes, nothing too fancy. And I'm using the palette knife brush again to do the eyelashes. I like to use a brush that's not 100% um, doesn't have a ton of flow because if you have a hard brush when you're doing eyelashes, it's gonna come out really pixelated when you zoom out because on like the one pixel or two or three pixel brushes with with the flow all the way up, the uh, the aliasing looks really crappy when you zoom out. So I mean that's pretty much the face. I'm just gonna go ahead and do like the neck and the shoulders. Um, my cat is okay. My cat Tyler right now he's eating my grapes. So um, if you hear me like yelling at somebody, yelling at my cat. So this is what I was <laughs> Tyler seriously. This is what I was talking about about um, adding the pink tones layer. I put a layer on top of my skin color where I threw down like the worst case of rosacea pink you've ever seen, but you put it down really dark, set the layer to, over to overlay, notch down the opacity, and then blend it out. And now I'm taking another brush from the Adonis collection, it's like the, the freckle or the pore brush or whatever, and I'm doing another layer on top set to screen to do the lighter color. Then on top of that, another layer set to multiply for the darker color. And then because she had like a hint of freckle, did another layer on top of that for the freckles. So all in all, to give the skin like a porous look, I did three layers. One set to screen, and it's about 30%. One set to multiply, also about 30%. And the freckles just set to um, overlay, and they were at about 50% because they're supposed to be a little darker. You know, it's really subtle, but it does give the skin like a little more of a realistic feel. So now I'm doing the hair. Um, I keep the layer locked when I'm blending inside of it. And I'm just like, once again, using this much tool, I threw down some flat colors with the palette line. You asshole, stop that. Sorry, cat. Um, and then I'm just smudging them out. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna smudge out the dark colors first, and then I'm gonna use my palette knife brush with the same base color, but set to screen to throw on some highlights. There we go. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, you're gonna unflatten your hair layer, and with your brush set to about like three pixels, add some little flyaway hairs because you know hair is never perfectly quaffed, and um, it just makes it you know it adds that whole level of realism. I was trying to keep this really dirty, a because I wanted to see if I could do it relatively fast, and b because I kind of just like that feel. So right now I'm just um, erasing some of the hair layer to show where the skin is peeking through. I threw up a quick little background using a cloud brush that I had. And that's it. That's Anna the Dream. Thank you for watching. Bye.